Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Downloaded. It is a documentary about the rise and fall of Napster, which was the original first big pirating music software to come around and was the beginning of the end for the music industry. Directed by Alex Winter from Bill and Ted fame. It's not just looking at just kind of the people behind Napster and the rise of it and the fall of it and its whole story. After that happened, it would basically evolve into BitTorrent is now and it was something they could never really control and this kind of shows how all that came about and how the music industry handled it and how kind of clueless everyone really was especially the media covering it but also what that technological advancement meant for everything that came after it. Napster was kind of the first thing like before there was like hey are you on Facebook, are you on Twitter, are you on Tumblr, are you on MySpace, are you on Friendster, are you on LiveJournal? Before all of that, it was like, hey, do you have Napster? You couldn't really find your friends. I don't remember finding friends, but it was something that was like that social kind of internet thing. You wanted to have Napster, you wanted to be part of that experience. And that was kind of the first web social thing and how that kind of evolved and became all this other stuff later. But there's never really been a documentary about Napster, which is odd because it was such a big deal when it happened. I mean, I remember when it happened, I was on it. It was an interesting documentary to watch just to recount that time and realize how much Napster really influenced and would take on, and also to see how these people who were involved in it have changed. Now, most of them relatively look the same, whether it's, you know, receding hairlines or just you know being fatter or bulkier or older the one i think who changed the most and almost looks unrecognizable you'd really have to look is sean parker who in the social network is played by justin timberlake there's an interview with him and him and sean fanning sean parker is clutching a red bull and he has like you know that gel hair when you have like the little the gel tips and then suddenly you cut to now and he's got facebook money he's wearing like incredibly nice clothes he has modern art behind him he has these nice fancy glasses he's the one who changed the most to see footage of sean parker in 2000 and see footage of Sean Parker in 2012-2013 is like it's remarkable the change in him. A lot of the footage I watched when it aired from 2000 to be honest because I was really into MTV at the time. In some ways I think the documentary the way it's trying to show this kind of bigger picture of Napster gets a little lost. I think it might have needed to be a little less interested in some things, certainly like Sean Fanning's upbringing. That part I felt was a little weak because they had like kind of sappy music going on during it and they dwelt on it a little too much, although parts of it are important, so maybe the, I think that part might have needed to be cut down. And it's drawing on all these other things to explain, like, you know, the history of the internet and things like that. The recent documentary, The Pirate Bay Away From Keyboard, I think they're both interesting and good documentaries, but I think the reason The Pirate Bay Away From Keyboard is the stronger documentary, you're just in the court case. It's a lot more economical in its storytelling, and this is kind of putting in a lot of information. And it, it does succeed, but it's to me, I, I was more in the Pirate Bay Away From Keyboard because I'm really in that court trial and I'm really seeing, you know, a story within them. This is more concerned with talking heads and is more concerned with telling all this information rather than telling the story of these few guys. This film is better for, I guess, educational purposes and to learn about what happened with Napster. I'd spend like hours and hours and hours on it. I mean, I remember faking sick from school and downloading music from Napster and then later Kazaa, which they don't mention Kazaa. And to me, Kazaa was so much bigger than LimeWire, but I was never into LimeWire, I was more of a Kazaa person. And they don't really get into, you know, how Napster kind of started what would eventually become like torrents and things like that. So, I mean, kind of minor quips with it, really. It's a really interesting documentary. I don't think a lot of people think about Napster and think about the influence it had. Think about how it was portrayed in the media at the time. You don't see technology being treated the way Napster was treated at the time. And it's interesting to look back because I would have really heated discussions with people when I was in my late teens about it with people who were in their 40s and 50s and they just really didn't understand. They basically looked at it as you're committing criminal action. I don't really think of it that way because I think it's just an industry that waited far too long to adapt to the internet and someone else kind of just did it for 
for them. And if they had been smart enough to figure it out before, maybe, you know, they wouldn't be in the shit show they are in now. Well, that, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of a foregone conclusion. That's me being Captain Hindsight there. It kind of reminded me of like kind of the big revolution it really was, you know, and how big of a deal Sean Fanning, when he designed the Napster program, he was. It'd be interesting for someone to see this who didn't grow up with Napster. I mean, since I'm so, I feel a little more connected to the story because of it. I'm sure there's people who will see this and kids will see this and be like, oh wow, that seems like crazy. I don't know if they'll get it as much and understand what dial-up was like. So if you have seen, download it and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.